I quietly back out of the room. As I, shut my, as I shut the door in front of my face, I whispered to myself, What an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. What What did you hear? I jumped at the sudden appearance of Misha, who had, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow, she got into jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminds me of Kenji's nerdy theory about a global- Oh, by the way, I think I'm thinking of cosplaying as Kenji for a future, um, for something for the future. So, I, I, I've been looking at what he really is, and, you know, I think I get the outfit pretty much done, 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 done. But his scar, it looks like something from Harry Potter, but I see scars online for Harry Potter. It looks exactly the same, except for the emblem that's in sketch on the side. Is that easily removed? I think I can just cut that out and sew it back together. I think I could do that. But yeah, man, Kenji just looks awesome, man. <laughs> Anyway, it really reminds me of Kenji's nerdy fear about a global feminist conspiracy, but I pushed that aside. I pushed that thought aside. Oh, great. Shizun, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. No, wait, more importantly, who isn't here? There's no club meeting today. She tries to curious to peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? You took so long. That's why you had to come in here to check what you was wrong. That's no good, Hee-Chan. She walks up and gets me scored and like me. I don't feel like diddling with this shit, bitch. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are all tardy. Oh, sorry. I got the things here. We just got. I was just going to bring them. I think you did something mischievous, Hee-Chan. Who was in there with you? I wonder. Misha signs something quickly. She's in. Shazin, Shazin, Shy, sorry, pointing at her own ear a couple times. Shy immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door into the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shy's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to interface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Ren, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders. From suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shai just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to sign in firstly, fiercely at Misha. Saw that face coming. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. Thank God she doesn't talk. She shoots a very low to stare at me too, as if somehow my fault that Ren is sleeping on one of the tables. She's a independent, grown-ass little woman. I'm not in charge of her. Hope she's not getting any of the funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door and, and takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. <laughs> oh! That's not funny. Oh, I'm a terrible fucking person. Open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with a half interested, half sleepy face. Hello. Dot, dot, dot. Oops. Miss Tazaki, what do you think you are doing? You absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such uh, disgraceful activity. I was, she was freaking sleeping. Everyone sleeps on the desk at one point or another. It sure is certainly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shai and Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shai taps Misha's shoulder, points at Ren, and makes some quick signs. Dot, dot. Dot. Why won't my phone turn on? Shit. It's charged. Oh, well. Oh, there. It's, it's, oh, great. Now it turns on. Pop the aside. Please don't do that anymore. Dot, dot, dot. Anyhow, how is your project going? Will it be done for the festival? I don't know why I'm giving Misha like a deep ass voice all of a sudden, but who cares? Shit. Ren looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shia's cold stares putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself too. Dot dot dot, and but man, you know, Misha looks bipolar to me. Like she's on, she she's bipolar, split personalities or something. I don't know why. I think she's that way. So screw. It. I'm just gonna roll with the punches and give her a different voice every anytime I see her. We'll think about it harder. As Misha signs her reply to Shy, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Dot dot dot. Mr. Zaki, please try to take this seriously. It'd be a disaster if the walls look like someone threw up the lunch onto it. Ren nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shai doesn't even... Not even after translation. 
She shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in the towel. Thank goodness, because I, I don't like doing freaking Misha's voice. I don't really like her at all, or Shy. But, you know, Ren, Lily, um... And Hanako, yeah, they're cool. The other two, I don't like them as much. Nothing against them, I just don't like them. Ren frowns thoughtfully as she, as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project before the weekend. There'll be there'll be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends are usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. Maybe if I, maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. I'm gonna ask what project she has and what are these apocalyptic consequences. But she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing, since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? <laughs> Is that, is that intentional? I shouldn't be laughing at this, but I, I have no. Oh, never mind. This paint doesn't. This paint can doesn't fit any. This paint. <clears throat> this paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks slightly at a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. Yo, how does she? Uncomfortable silence. But how does she carry her bags around? Does she? Just kick the bags on the. I don't even know. Sorry. It looks like a dull clank. Besides the gentle, being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. Heavy, cause I'm out of shape. Yeah, sure. We need to take it. Away, away. Come sail away in with that. She takes off with me to the hallway. Me and the paint can't follow. Since it's little choice for us. Dun 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 dun. Psh, ugly ass shit. The hallway is quiet and empty now with Shy and Misha gone, so we two leave towards the stairway at the other end. Every 215 or 20 steps, I had to change my, the can from one hand to another because the fan handle cuts into my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. I hate that feeling when it digs into your fingers and oh it hurts so much when you switch over and it feels cool and relief until you have to switch it back and it hurts even more oh it sucks when stirs on beside me with an uneven pace that i have trouble matching or maybe i'm walking weirdly because of the extra weight it seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast and i can't figure out which two flights of stairs below trouble appears in the form of a head nurse in this fox-like grin ah oh, mr nakao what a happy coincidence it's actually like two of course i don't know if i gave him a voice or not no, 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 I, 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 I just got it, I just got it. <clears throat> Mr. N Nakai! What a happy coincidence. Zaki too, of course. He, he nods courteously to Ren, who does not acknowledge him back, and then turns to me because, obviously, it's me who has, he has some business with. There's something I forgot to mention on Monday. I'm not away impassively because I can't even begin to forget, guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle delving deep into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. It's about your medication. Since you haven't been that long on your current medication, there might be some unexpected side effects, which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. So we would do a few tests regularly, but what I want to want is for you to keep an eye on everything in your condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything. And come see me if something happens. Alright. So, how are you? Everything fine? I give up and drop the can to the floor before answering him. Apparently, this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I want to say something generic as an answer, but then I realize how often I've done that lately. Other people have asked me that too, but teaching students here? Parents, visitors, nurses, doctors at the hospital? Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's natural for a hospital, not so much for a school. Why is he blushing? I just noticed that. Oh well. Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's natural for a hospital, but I just repeated this. This is a small school, and both the student base and the faculty seem to be very tightly knit. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. And it's not the kind of school that, get, and that gets transfer students too often. The thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyway. That's great. Also, one more thing. My sources tell me that you've been at neither the school track nor even the pool, so I'd like to know if you have taken up exercising as I asked. Of course I haven't, but his way of inquiring gives me the feeling that I should have been running my ass off on the track since the very first day. You have people spying on me? 
Not as such, I just happen to know a few people, but that's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually just doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up the lift can and lift the can up, up and down a few times, like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder, even though it's weighing down on my arms painfully. That stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, and it comes back like it was never gone. Tozaki, would you give us a second? <laughs> The nurse grabs me by my shoulder without waiting for Wynn's permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you're still on your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm kind of coming down this hard on you is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it will be. It's the same with everything like dieting. Can you, can you promise me you'll be more serious from now on? Sure, why not? Get you off my back. Yeah, I promise, definitely. He stares at me for a moment and then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy who probably has no qualms offering consultation to you if you don't mind if you don't want to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around. Speaking of speaking of which, Yu-Gi-Oh from um Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh! Him beating Noah, 100 life points against 10,000 life points, he had no cards or anything. Bullshit! Man, I hate when he pulls shit out of his ass, man. I always hated that about the show. It was always about that set of Kaiba, though, man. And his blue eyes like dragon shit. Anyway, he leaves with a wave of his hand. Wait, what time is it? Oh, wait, I got a new message, sorry. Oh, I wish I hadn't read that, because that is a freaking bummer, if that's... <laughs> uh, well, that sucks. I don't know where this happened, but shit, that's some interesting news. <sighs> he waves for a wave as he wait. Oh, I was like, he leaves with a wave of his hand and no answer, and I walk to a man who has been waiting, idly leaning against the hallway wall and staring at the pale lighting fixtures in the ceiling. Even when I approach, she doesn't move her eyes off them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? It comes out more ac accusing than I intended, accidentally lashing out at her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't even know her. It's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about confident confidentiality too, talking about that kind of thing in public? But it's not Ren's fault, is it? I look at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Ren is just staring past my shoulder. Her head is tilted like a bird. Hmm. No, it's not. Sigh. I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there's some inaccessible lock that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, that for my heart. Would they make you better? No, not really. They just make me a little less worse. Rin keeps looking at me for a little longer, and she says she never says anything further, nor displays any kind of emotion. I could dis discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all of this. At the hospital, it was very easy, but I still haven't sorted my feelings out. Feelings about having to live a normal life with this stability. We leave to the main building, and Rin leads us onwards towards the dorm. You know, I don't know how long I've been recording, but this is a good place to take a break real quick.